Okay, before we move on, I want to spend a little bit of time talking about infinities. I know when I was in grade 12, infinities didn't make sense. What is this? Is it a number or, or not? Well, infinity itself is not a number. Infinity is an idea. It's a concept. It means something that is really, really, really big, okay? So think of the biggest number you can think of, a billion, gazillion, a Google, whatever it is, bigger, okay? You can never reach infinity. You can never say that a number equals infinity because it doesn't, you can't equal infinity. But since we're talking about limits, we can say that it approaches infinity. It approaches a super big number, okay? So golden rule with limits is we wanna try a direct substitution. So what happens after you do a direct substitution if you get a non-zero number divided by zero? For example, three divided by zero. And remember, it's very important to make the distinction. This zero isn't the exact number zero. This zero is the limit zero. So it's a really small number. Okay. Well, it turns out that a number divided by something really small is going to give us something really big. So if the overall value of your expression, whatever you get here, is positive, the limit equals positive infinity, which we know does not exist because it's not a finite number. And if the overall uh, value is negative, then we know the limit approaches negative infinity, which also does not exist. But even though it does not exist, we can say it approaches positive or negative infinity. If we can't know for sure if the overall value is positive or negative, then the limit just does not exist in general. So let's see some examples to clear this up. Example number one, we have the limit as x approaches two from the right of one over two minus x. So let's do a direct substitution. We get one over, 2 minus 2 from the right. So when I have 2 from the right, I'm thinking something like 2.000001, something like that. And if I do 1 over 2 minus 2.0001, I'm going to get something really small in the denominator, practically 0, but it's going to be slightly negative. So this is going to be 1 over 0 from the left, which is going to give us negative infinity because the overall value is negative and a number divided by something really small is something really big, so we get negative infinity. But negative infinity is not a finite number. So if they ask you what is the value of this limit, we say that it does not exist. But if we were graphing it, for example, we know that that graph will go down and down and down, approach negative infinity forever and ever and ever. Okay, part two. We wanna evaluate the limit as x approaches two of negative e over absolute value of x minus two. So let's go ahead and do a direct substitution negative e divided by absolute value of two minus two. Well, how do I know if this is two from the right or two from the left, like in question one? Well, we don't know, but we're taking the absolute value. So two minus two is gonna give me something really small. It's either zero from the right or zero from the left, right? Something really small that's positive, something really small that's negative. But the instant I take an absolute value, that's gonna be a positive. So this is gonna give me negative e divided by zero that is slightly positive, my overall value is going to be negative divided by positive, which is negative, and a number, e, divided by some really small number is just gonna give me infinity. So this is the value negative infinity, which means that the limit does not exist. Okay, let's look at this last one. This time, again, same thing. How do I know if pi is approaching from the left or from the right? This time we don't have an absolute value. Well, in this case, let's try to find the limit from both sides. The limit as x approaches pi from the left and the limit as x approaches pi from the right. Do a direct substitution for both cases. So for the first case, I'm approaching pi from the left. So it's something just shy of pi. So if I have pi minus something just shy of pi, I'm gonna get something really small, but it's gonna be positive. So this is one over zero from the right. In my second case here, I am approaching pi from the right, so something slightly bigger than pi. So if I have pi minus something slightly bigger than pi, I'm gonna get a negative, but a really small negative. So in the first case, it approaches positive infinity. In the second case, it approaches negative infinity. So in both cases, it does not exist because the limit does not approach a finite number, but it's very useful when we're graphing. We know that from the left of pi, we're approaching positive large number. From the right of pi, we're approaching a negative large number. And that is a concept called vertical asymptote. So it turns out that if your function, as x approaches a certain value, approaches positive or negative infinity, that is called a vertical asymptote, x equals a. We will come back to this and talk about this in curve sketching, so don't worry about this too much right now.